Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Professor Hank. So today we're going to talk about iterators in C++. We'll talk about what they are and how we can use them. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so iterators are objects that work like pointers and we use them to iterate or traverse over containers such as vector, array, maps, forward list. Now there are six categories of iterators. The first category is forward. We use plus plus with this iterator and it can only move forward within the container. We can use a bi-directional iterator, which is going to use plus plus or minus minus, and we can traverse both forwards and backwards to the container. We can use a random access iterator, which allows us to move forwards, move backwards, and allows us to jump to a specific element within the container. We have input iterators, which can be used to read data from an input device or file using an input stream. We can use an output iterator, which is used to write data to output using an output stream. And then there's a contiguous iterator, which is a random access iterator that points to elements known to be stored inside of contiguous memory locations. Now, the type of container is going to determine the type of iterator that you use. So for arrays, vectors, and decks, we can use random access iterators. For list, set, multi-set, map, and multi-map containers, we can use bidirectional iterators. For the forward list, unordered map, unordered set, or unordered multi-set containers, we can use forward iterators. Now, how are iterators like pointers? Well, we can use an iterator to point to a container element, so an element inside of, say, a vector. We can use the dereference operator asterisk to dereference the iterator so we can access the value in the element that it's pointing to. We can use the arrow operator if that iterator is pointing to an object within the container. We can use equals to assign an iterator to an element. We can use equals equals and not equals to compare iterators. We can use plus plus to increment the iterator, which will cause it to move forward to the next element. We can use plus to add an integer to the iterator and which will allow us to move forward that many elements. So if we have an iterator IT and then we say plus three, that'll move our iterator forward three places within the container. And then similarly, we can use minus to move backwards within the container. And again, containers are just things like arrays, vectors, etc. Now, how do we define an iterator? This is the syntax. So you have to specify the type of container. You have to use the scope resolution operator, the keyword iterator, and then you need some kind of an identifier, right? A name for a variable for your iterator. So let's create an iterator for a vector, and then we'll use that iterator with our vector. So we'll work with a vector of integers, then we're gonna have that scope resolution operator, keyword iterator, and then we're gonna have to have some kind of identifier for our variable here. So I'll just go with IT. Now let's create a vector that we'll use our iterator with. So vector int, and then we'll just name this V and assign to it some random values here, 8675309. Now, I want my iterator to point to the first element in my vector. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to say it equals V dot begin. Okay, so the begin method in my vector will allow me to set my iterator to point to the first element. Now, if I want to print out the contents of that first element, then I can use the dereference operator with my iterator, and that will get me the value out of that first element. So let's go ahead and run that. And you can see that we've got eight up there. So success. Now, can we advance our iterator. Yes, we can. So we can do something like this. We can say it plus plus. So that's going to cause our iterator to move from pointing from the first element to the second element. So then I can display the contents of that element once again. And you'll see now that we've got the second value. And I could move forward using plus. So I could do something like this it plus equals two to move ourselves forward two elements. And remember what this means, this is the same thing as doing this, okay? And if I display, dereference the iterator and send that to C out, you'll see that we've got the next value, right? So our iterator start off pointing here and then we moved it here with the it plus plus and then we had it 
pointing to this element with the it plus equals two. Now, in addition to the begin method provided by container vector, we have an end method as well. So we could do something like this, it equals v dot end. And what that does is that will have our iterator refer to a location just past the end, essentially past the end of our last element. So from there, we could do something like this. We could say it minus minus, and then dereference our iterator. And you'll see that we've gone back. We started at a place just past the end of the container. And then once we do that it minus minus, it's going to be referring to the nine here. So then as soon as we run everything, you're going to see there's the nine. Now, typically this is used to know when you've reached the end of the container. So I can write code that looks something like this. I can assign to my iterator the beginning of the vector. And then I can say, well, so long as that iterator doesn't equal the end of the container, then how about we print stuff out. So I could do something like this, C out star IT, and then we will advance our iterator. So then we're going to see there's all the values, right? Eight, six, seven, five, three, zero, nine. All right. So let me show you a couple more things we can do here. So we can use the auto keyword to create our iterator. So let's say that I wanted to change everything in my vector to all zeros. I could do something like this. I could say for auto it equals v dot begin. And the compiler is going to know what type of iterator this is based off of what's returned by that begin method, right? So, so long as it does not equal v dot end increment it, and then we will use the dereference operator to assign zero to each element. And then once that's done, we'll have another loop here and we'll print out the contents of our vector to prove that it actually worked. So let's see out star it and we'll put a little space in between each value so we can see it all on one line so you can see there's all zeros all right so that type of iterator is known as a mutable iterator it's called that because we can use it to change the contents of our container of our vector here but there's another type that we can use that's called a constant iterator and that's used when you are iterating over or traversing over or working with constant containers so Let's say that we made this vector constant, and by doing so, you know, you can no longer change these values. Now, if we want to use an iterator to iterate over or to traverse over this, then we need to use a constant iterator instead. So we would have something that looks like this, vector int colon colon const iterator it. And then we could assign to that iterator the first element, but we have to use a slightly different method. We have to do c begin. So it's a different type of iterator, it's a constant iterator. But then we can iterate just like we've done before, we just can't change the contents of the vector, right? So I could do something like, you know, while it does not equal vector dot c end. It's a different type of iterator, right? So we have to use different types of methods. And then I could do something like this. I could say, you know, star it, just like we did before, and then increment my iterator, right? So we need a constant iterator to traverse or to iterate over a constant container. So you can see there it works just fine. Next, let's see how we can use reverse iterators. And we will change our iterator from a constant iterator to a reverse iterator. And then we will initialize it or assign to it R begin. And then we'll keep going so long as our iterator does not equal R n. So this is going to set our iterator to point to a place just past the end of our container. And then it'll keep iterating in reverse or repeating in reverse or moving in reverse until it gets to a point just before the beginning of our container. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now you can see that we printed the thing in reverse. Now to finish up, I wanna point out something here. You might have noticed that I didn't have a constant vector here, but I used a constant iterator in it. 
To be clear, the difference between a constant iterator and a mutable iterator is what you can do with that iterator. So I can use this constant iterator to access the contents of the container, but what I can't do is use it to change the contents of the container. So if I tried to do something like this using a constant iterator, it's gonna give me an error, right? See the red squiggle underneath the dereference operator? It's because it's a constant iterator. Now, if I was just using a normal iterator, then I would be able to change it, right? So I'd be able to use that dereference operator to change the contents of what my iterator is pointing at. All right, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. What did we talk about? We talked about iterators in C++. We talked about the different types of iterators, reverse iterators, forward iterators, random iterators. We looked at the categories of containers that you can use with each. And we looked at the different types of iterators, constant iterators, mutable iterators, and we saw how to use them with a typical container like a vector. As usual, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions about any of the content in this video or any of the videos in our classes, feel free to send me an email via Canvas or stop by our online Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.